Let me first say good morning to all the members of the Hesitant Oregon for the Chinese, for students, for parents, for friends. Welcome to Hesitant Oregon College. And he came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood far off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he saw them and said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God, and fell yeah. down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And okay. Jesus answering said, Were yeah. there not ten cleansed? But where, but where are the nine? Where are you? There are, there are others. not found. That returns to give glory to God. Say to the stranger, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had met thee whole. Here ends our scripture reading for today. Good morning, my Lord. Yeah. It's a time of fasting and celebration. Um, yeah.
theological beliefs, or even emotional mountaintops. God's steadfast love is good towards us. So unlike our earthly family, God is unwavering in his decision towards us because sometimes our love changes according to what's happening in a person's life. But God's love towards us is constant. Sometimes we may do wrong things and believe we are far from God and God is far from us. We may do wrong things and don't feel we can talk to God. But there's one thing that does not change, doesn't matter what we have done, that God's love towards us is constant. It doesn't change. And because of that, we should celebrate. Paul boldly states and declares, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. God's love is a life-changing love. It is a love that we cannot keep to ourselves. It's a love that we must share. So if you are here today and you are experiencing God's love, if you are here and you enjoy, appreciate, bask in the fact that you, ex you experience God's love, then it, it behooves each one of us to share that love. Because our God is a loving God. That's a reason to celebrate. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the challenge you've given us to celebrate who you are. Not simply to celebrate what you have done for us and what you are doing in our lives, but to celebrate the fact that your love for us is constant and you promise never to leave us nor forsake us. And when we feel down and out, you are near and dear to us to comfort and uphold. We thank you for the privilege of coming to the, an occasion like this to give you thanks for persons who have worked hard and smart and and to celebrate with them and to celebrate you. We thank you, Lord, for the occasion that is here with us today to challenge others who may not have achieved that which they want to achieve. So that person will be challenged and encouraged and seek to emulate those who are excelling. We pray, Father, that you guide us through this ceremony today. We pray, Lord, that you lead us by your Holy Spirit because we know, as always, when your Holy Spirit leads us, we are well led. These things we pray in Jesus' name. God bless you. Successful people are not gifted. They just work hard, then succeed on purpose. G.K. Nielsen. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We have come to award some of our students who have worked hard and have been successful in their academic pursuits. And it is my pleasurable task to welcome you to awards ceremony 2023. On behalf of the administration of the college, I bid welcome to the members of our board of management who have joined us. Our chairman, Mr. Lowell Morgan, is guiding the function, and I see Bishop Devon Anglin and Reverend Phyllis Smith Seymour. Welcome to you all. I would also like to welcome the minister of this congregation who just walked in. Ah, welcome. <laughs> All members of the ancillary, administrative, and academic staffs have contributed to the success of these awardees in one way or another. You have all worked hard to ensure that we are able to celebrate excellence today. Some of you lectured, some of you calculated GPAs, you identified students for awards in the various categories, you prepared documents, you made the environment clean and otherwise conducive to work. You encouraged the students when they needed that friendly, kind, caring word to keep going, and you did so much more. You played your role well, and so I welcome you all to this celebration. Parents, guardians, significant others, spouses, friends, well-wishers, thank you for taking the time to celebrate with the awardees, those of you who have come. We appreciate you for your continued support to them and their beloved college. And so we bid you hearty welcome. 
We especially welcome our guest speaker today. And as is usually the case at a function like this, she's our guest speaker and she is also a past student. Welcome, Mrs. Peter Gaitain. We look forward to what you will share with us later. Welcome to you, our students, headed by the Guild of Students. You have come to give support to those who will receive awards today, and some of you are yourselves receiving awards, but we especially welcome those who will take part in the program and perform various roles. Awardees, your excellence in your academic pursuits has made this ceremony possible. And so we welcome you as we congratulate you. And so on behalf of Mrs. Blythe Miles, acting principal, and Mr. Hervin Rodney, acting vice principal, I welcome one and all as you share with us in award ceremony 2023. Thank you very much, Dr. Garner. Let's just pause for a minute to allow those persons who are outside to, if they are supposed to come inside to join us inside, those persons are outside. Oh, you're not supposed to be with us. Are there persons on the outside who are supposed to join us? So we have less walking in and out as we proceed. Oh, the ushers, all right. Our acting principal, Mrs. Claudine Light Miles, will give us a statement. Good morning, everyone. I want to use the protocol that was already established and to greet each of us this morning in a very special way. This morning is a very special morning to me, and it became even more special as I sat beside one of my very, very good friends from high school, Miss Donna Roberts. I don't know if her name, Paul, but we were best friends at Bishop Gibson High School. It is indeed this morning an absolute pleasure of mine to congratulate and to salute all our students at this year's annual award ceremony. This ceremony is very important as it highlights the successes of our students on their academic journey. Over the past 162 years, Bethlehem Moravian College has had a rich history of producing professionals of superior quality. The students who are being honored today have now become a part of this rich history. Our graduates have been known to have made esteemed contribution to the education arena, the hospitality industry, the business sector, and to national development on a whole. Today, I am proud to give accolades to the students who have excelled in their academic pursuit for the academic year 2021-2022. These students have been accepted to the following awards category. One, principals on a roll, two, honorary mention, and three, certificates of merits in the courses they pursue. It is important to note that 17 of our students have been on the principals on a roll for the past three consecutive years. And I'm going to ask them to stand. Could you stand for us? These students have excelled due to their discipline passion and zeal for learning and their stick to itiveness. Congratulations to you. You have done extremely well. The foundations of your academic journey will help to shape the successes you will reap later in life. This accomplishment is just one step on your journey. 
I encourage you to use your abilities to seek out solutions to problems and to be innovative as you make a contribution to your communities, your country, and to the world. Your creativity, your passion, and your sleepless nights have not been in vain. Your hard work has borne fruit. Cheers to you for a job well done. To those who did not and will not receive an award today, I want to encourage you that all hope is not lost. The sky is the limit, and there are endless opportunities available to you. You will achieve your academic and personal goals with perseverance and by not giving up on yourself. It is worthwhile to note that Bethlehem Moravian College is in a transformation mode, and we continue to execute the college's five-year strategic plan, which began in 2022. This plan focused greatly on student services. The aim is to ensure that many more of our students will achieve ac academic excellence and will ultimately improve the college's throughput rates. This opportunity has come at a most ideal time as the Ministry of Education and other stakeholders in the education arena are grappling with the effects of the post-COVID-19 era and the dilemmas which exist as a result. Bethlehem Moravian College is forging ahead to find solutions and to improve on the quality of our output you, our students. The nation and the world are depending on us to get it right. The focus on social and emotional intelligence, the differentiation of teaching and learning, and the direction of the college has signaled to us that the time has come for us to revisit the structure of this award ceremony. Our mission to create harmonious, equitable and a prosperous society by holistically developing nation builders necessitates a structure to which students can broaden their scope for achievement and would have personal and professional benefits to you. We're therefore seeking to develop holistic individuals and will have an appreciation for both the academic and non-academic accomplishments. A student who is invited to the principal's honor roll will be and should be an ambassador of this institution. Hence, we will be ensuring that this is achieved at the next year's award ceremony. We're committed to helping all our students reach their potential and realize their goals. As an institution, we're aware that award ceremonies help to build brand and to give us a ranking, where therefore, we therefore must ensure that more of our students are celebrated in this way. The accomplishment of our students is of great value to us. If, you, if we are to realize the mission of this institution to be the Caribbean's premier tertiary institution where graduates are positively transforming society, we must invest in the growth and development of all our students. The academic excellence being up celebrated today is a result of the successful partnership between our stakeholders. The Moravian Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, the Ministry of Education, the Board of Management, the University of the West Indies through the Joint Board of Teacher Education, the Council of Community Colleges of Jamaica, and our students and all categories of staff. Each of us have played a role in this process. And although you are getting an award today, we are just as proud. We are a team and a family, and each member is successful today because our students are successful. I express my heartiest gratitude to the collective efforts of everyone towards the grooming and development of these, stud these students and their talent. I look forward to hearing the stories of successes that our students will achieve and make us proud. 
I know that you're resolute in your spirit. Of course, you're a Bethlehemite. And a Bethlehemite is always resolute. And that is what keeps this beacon on the hill shining for 162 years. Thank you. Davian. Morning, everyone. Assignments come knocking at my door It's two weeks and it's Monday and it's the due date I see, I know, I don't know Now I'll make it I made it And now I'm here And I'm here to tell you that you have the ability to do it and I'm crying out for you Lord, Lord, yeah. Lord, Lord, you say no Every time I go down on my knees I lift my hands to thee Crying now for you to help me. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored 
and incredibly privileged to introduce our guest of honor and speaker. I emphasize that I'm honored because I'm proud to announce that our guest speaker is no stranger to us. She's an actual alumnus of this highly esteemed institution and an epitome of success. She holds a certificate in food technology from the Knox Community College, an associate degree in hospitality entertainment and tourism, where she majored in food and beverage from the Bethlehem Raven College. <laughs> and a bachelor's of science in business administration, graduating cum laude, meaning with distinction, from the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean. Her accolades does not end there. She attended the American Hotel and Lodging Educational Institute, where she is a certified hospitality educator and boasts over 15 corporate training experience with Sandal Resorts as their learning and development manager across several prolific resorts locally and regionally, namely Sandal South Coast, Beaches Negril Resort and Spa, Beaches Sandy Bay, Grand Pineapple Beach Resort, and Beaches Turks and Caicos. Coupled with that impressive background, our guest speaker brings unique perspective and an insatiable appetite for helping others maximize their potential. She has a passion, or she's very passionate about people and is especially inspired to help others take their careers and themselves to pioneering levels. Our phenomenal guest speaker is the living idiom of a woman on a mission. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming home the well-esteemed and our very own Miss Peter Gateen. All right, BMC, are you there? Yes. All right, sound check, sound check. All right, I feel the pressure after that introduction. So like your colleague sang earlier, Lord, I'm crying to you for help, all right? So ladies and gentlemen, faculty, students, everyone under the sound of my voice, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is indeed, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to be standing here. Yes, I'm a little vertically challenged, so all right, thank you. All right, I looked at your theme for this year's celebration. And what does it say? I want you to read it to me. What does it say? I don't want the faculty to tell me. I want the students to tell me. I don't think you're confident yet. Say it again. All right, this is a very profound statement. And you know, like I would tell my team members, you can't come in on my class like flour and leave like dumpling. You have to leave like a black forest cake or a cheesecake or something else, right? So in the same way you're attending the Bethlehem Moravian College, it's the same way you're going to leave and represent not just yourselves, but the college, true? You're with me? All right. So I'm truly honored and very humbled to be celebrating with you today, 20 years after graduating from this noble institution. I know I have good genes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> 20 years. So I am thrilled to have the opportunity to address such a talented gathering of hardworking students and faculty. Really, really humbled and honored. And I use this opportunity to congratulate our achievers and all those who have taken part in this year's accomplishments. A round of applause for everyone. So I am very impressed with the achievements here today of everyone. And you know, of course, your awards are the results of what? Hard work and effort, agree? 
So you earned your awards, and it will always remind you of your dedication. So give your best always. I congratulate you once again on your achievements. So here's a question. It's not a trick question. But anybody in here born in the year 2000 or after the year 2000? Let me see your hands. All right. So let me see how much you know now. What did they predict was going to happen in the year 2000? Maybe the persons born before 2000 would know. They said that in 2000, the world was going to end. But you know what else was significant about the year 2000? Not the slightest idea. It was the year my colleagues and I started our journey at this noble institution. <laughs> All right. And uh, I spent the next few years mastering my craft, as you would have heard, as a student of the hospitality, entertainment, and tourism faculty. I then joined Sandals Resort and spent about 17 years growing, evolving, and transforming with them. And uh, it's not about me, but just to give you a little synopsis of my journey, I started out as the HR, well, the food and beverage administrative assistant. I then transitioned to the HR assistant role and uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, when I went to HR, that was my game changer, believe me. This is where I recognized my passion for people and intentionally built on that passion. I was then promoted two years later to the role of learning and development manager. And this afforded me the opportunity to impact lives at every level of the organization for 14 years. And this has led me to this moment where I'm now standing here to share in your journey and your successes today. Are we together? You're listening? All right, I know the faculty is listening because I feel them, because they, they have to be my support up here, you know. But the students, I want you to be a part of this conversation today. The day is celebrating you. So I'm going to give you two simple instructions. When I say clap, you're going to clap once. When I say snap, you're going to snap once. Clear? Clear? Clear. So let's go. Clap. Snap. Snap. Clap. 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 Snap. Clap. Snap. Snap. Clap. All right. You're with me. All right. So I have your attention now. You're focusing now. So today, it's not about the traditional guest speaker bit. We're going to be having a conversation. You with me? So this conversation is about something I've become passionate about over the years and something I've learned in my role. And it simply is this. How you do things and how you touch the lives of others often matters more to your success than any of the awards you receive today your job title, your rank in society, or a big fat bank account. So let me repeat. How you do things and how you touch the lives of others often matters more to your success than your awards received today, the job titles you will have when you move on from here, your rank in society, or a big fat bank account. At the end of the day, none of that matters. Are you with me? All right. Now, this boils down to your character and your attitude. Far more than you realize, these simple things define what success will look, for, look like for you while pursuing your studies at this noble institution that I absolutely love later in your career or life in general. Upon leaving this institution, some of you will become teachers, engineers, Hospitality professionals, we can't leave that one out, right? Right. Politicians, you name it. But what impact, ladies and gentlemen, both positive and negative, will you leave at Bethlehem Moravian College? On your communities, 
your places of employment, and the world at large. How do you want to be remembered? So how do you achieve success in a way that is failure-proof? You must discover your purpose. How many of you know what your purpose is in life? Don't feel no way if you're not finding it yet. Some of us are still searching, right? But the important thing is to seek for it so you can find it. With me? Your purpose is that unique, positive contribution that only you can make. And what you will be remembered for. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is your legacy. Are you with me? So if you are with me, I want you to say after me, I am building my legacy. I am building my legacy. All right, I feel it. So you build your legacy by finding out what your talents are. And then you build on that as you grow your strength. Now, this growth is experienced over time, and it forces you to evolve and transform, thereby leaving a potent legacy. And when you live your life according to that, you are finding the intersection between a need that you have, between a need that your class or your school may have, between the need of your community or the need of the country, and using those strengths to address that need. You will not be able to address it all at once, believe me. But you can address it contextually using your talents. When you discover your purpose, you can't fail. You know why? You know why? Because then you know your why. So why are you attending Bethlehem? Why are you sitting here today? You have to know your why. With me? So after the momentum of today's celebration fades, what remains is your legacy. What people remember about you. There are three important things that you must do in order to leave a potent legacy. You must grow, evolve, and transform. Make sense? And you see, we go back to your theme for today, celebrating the past, reshaping the future. You with me? I hope this silence means you're focusing and you're absorbing everything, you know. All right. Now, you have to do these three things, grow, evolve, and transform, and you have to do it intentionally because someone somewhere is being inspired by your story, whether you want to believe it or not. Say after me again, to build my legacy, I must grow. To build my legacy, I must grow. And I hope you're not saying it because I told you so, and it's a Simon Says thing, right? I want you to believe it as you say it. So if you think the best way to step into a new season of your life is to just sit there and do nothing and wait for God to put things in your lap, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I've never seen that happen. Never. The more prepared you are, the sooner you move into your next level or your next assignment. And... You can't be prepared without, without growing. You just tell me to build your legacy, you must grow. So say it after me again, to build my legacy, I must grow. Amen. So here's my question. Where do you need to grow? I don't want an answer, I want you to reflect on it. Where do you need to grow? If you say to me that you're feeling pretty confident and you think you're where you need to be, I don't think you understand what your next level involves. I know someone under the sound of my voice understands the magnitude of the next level based on their need to grow before they go. Don't tell me you're going to be a great teacher or a renowned hospitality professional. Show me you believe it by growing. Grow in your academics. 
That's the whole point of today's celebration, right? Right? Yes, man. Grow in the knowledge of your field. Grow in wisdom. Grow in knowledge and grow in understanding. Don't just sit and wait. Because, you know, if I were your enemy, that's exactly what I'd want you to do. To just sit there, be unprepared, miss out on passing your exams, miss out on getting these awards today, and just keep pushing back the clock of that moment in time when you move into your next level. If I was your enemy, that's what I would want you to do. When you grow, you evolve. You experience something new. And in order to experience something new, it always requires that you do something new. Agreed? If I should ask you, how many of you want to experience something new at this stage now that you're in in life? Let me see your hand. I can go now. <laughs> Y'all don't want to experience something new? Like, life is not just black and white. There are colors of the rainbow. We have to experience something new. Are you with me? Yes, man, we have to experience something new, right? But in order to do that, we have to do something new. And simply wishing for it does not make you step into it. It involves maximizing your chronos. So no matter how much you think you're on a roll, you need to grow 10 times more than you think because the next level is going to be five times more difficult than you can imagine. There are days when I wish I was still a student here, eating matron food, because then I wouldn't have a supermarket bill or a family to take care of, right? But the reality is the clock is not stopping. It's not waiting. So we have to be prepared. With me? All right. Remember, we are talking, so you're going to continue the conversation. Are you going to say after me, to build my legacy, I must evolve. So you're following the pattern. The first thing you did was to build, start building the legacy, right? What was the first ingredient you added? Growth. And the second one? Evolve. So there is this motivational speaker that I love to listen to, and his name is Marcus Taylor. I don't know if any of you recognize the name. And this is the segment is a summary of one of his speeches, right? So he said in life, you either evolve or you expire. You either evolve or you expire. Remember that. The truth is everything changes. The economy changes, relationships change. We change mentally, emotionally, physically, you name it. So far in your journey, maybe every time you change, you got hurt. And so now there may be a mental block about change because you may say that every time you change, you feel pain. Anybody feel me? You stepped out of that relationship and you felt pain. You go from one course to another and even one exam to another and you feel the fire of transition, true or false. And so you may now be hypnotized by the pain of change, but today, I want you to change your belief system. Change is not painful. We want you to see change as growth. See change as necessary. See change as critical. Those of you who are willing to take everything you do to the next level, you will inherit the future. And Marcus Taylor continues to say that change is inevitable and you are either changing for the worse or for the better. You decide. You may say that change is hard, but you know what? It's hard to be broke. It's hard to stay depressed. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It is hard. And in spite of what you think, life is hard. So choose your hard. 
You either work for it or you let life knock you down. Seize the privilege, seize the moment. See change as brilliance and beauty. See change as necessary. Because if you don't evolve, and listen carefully, if you don't evolve, there are people out there who are depending on you that will be stuck where they are for the rest of their lives if you don't change. Because they're depending on you. So in spite of everything, just remember you'll be rewarded for the pain. Saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven assignment you one time. Nobody was right. So cry in secret if you must cry. Bleed in secret if you must. But in public, put your best foot forward. Because you will be rewarded. Like our achievers today, they put the work in. So the onus is on all of us in this room, including me, to always put our best foot forward. Believe in your dream, even if no one else believes in you. People that have the will to win are the ones that do win. If your why is big enough, And I want you to bear in mind that some people's names can either be a key or a padlock on your life. You know what I mean by this? You're sure? In layman terms, I call it the power of association. So some names will open the lock for you. And some names, if you associate with them, they lock you up. So, there was this young lawyer who tried and tried and tried and tried to set up his law firm, and every time he tried, he failed. I mean, he was a humble, smart young man, and after failing so many times, he was really frustrated, and he did what most of us do when we're in trouble. What do you do? Pray. Amen, sister. So... The young lawyer, after failing so many times, he went to God in prayer and he said, Lord, change my life. Things have to change. That's what he prayed. Right? So, based on our conversation today, we can safely say that he experienced growth. You with me? And that growth led him to evolve into a lawyer. You following? So now he wanted to transform into a successful lawyer. You follow? So over time, he would see some top clients and institutions running around trying to talk to the senior lawyer that we mentioned earlier, the one whose name was Aki. So the young lawyer would see all kind of billionaire, millionaire, trillionaire, top business people running after this man because they wanted him to help them with all kinds of legal services. And I mean, these people were bidding millions of dollars to just get this lawyer to handle one case for them. And you know what? The young lawyer felt that life was so unfair because all he wanted was just a change of the man biddings to make life 
and he had none of that. And this man had millions of dollars chasing after him and he was just stepping over it and passing it and gone, right? So this is where I really want you to listen intentionally. So the lawyers, the senior lawyer, the young lawyers, the experienced ones, the not so experienced ones, all of them were at some conference or the other. And you can imagine all the who is who was there. The big wigs, right? So the young lawyer, for them to say no, he put in pride behind him and he went up to the senior lawyer and he said, sir, please help me. Please change my life. And the senior lawyer looked at him and he said, okay, I will. I will help you. And he said, so the senior lawyer said to the young one, follow me. So they walked out into the common area and uh, this is where everyone was. So, you know, you can imagine you now, head started to turn. Because this is a top lawyer, you know. So head started to turn and everybody was wondering, then who is that little person with him? Because the power of association, right? So the senior lawyer started a conversation with the young lawyer and he said to him, how are you? How is your wife? So the young lawyer, most annoyed, said, Sir, that is not the issue. The issue is that I am broke. So the senior lawyer said to him, Just talk to me, just talk to me. And they continued walking together. And the senior lawyer again said, Who are you? How are you? You're eating well? You know, are you taking care of yourself? The man, no, the young lawyer was perturbed and he's like, Sir, that is not the issue. The issue is that I am broke. So the senior lawyer said to him, walk with me. And they walked and they got to the senior lawyer's office. And the senior lawyer turned to him and straightened his jacket and him said to him, if you still fail after this, don't come back to my office. You following me? But do you know what the senior lawyer was doing? Do you? Remember, you know, when the senior lawyer stepped out with the young lawyer, you know, head started turning. They already knew who the senior lawyer was, but they did not know who he was. So do you now understand what the senior lawyer was doing? So remember what I told you earlier about people's names being either padlocks or keys? So feeling a little deflated, the young lawyer left the man's office. And of course, he was still broke. Nothing changed, right? So he was about to get a taxi to go home. And what do you think happened? Kind of predictable, right? But one of the billionaire, I must say, billionaire clients stopped him and said, excuse me, sir, I saw you with the senior lawyer. We've been trying to get him to negotiate a deal for us, but maybe our rates are not good enough. Can we please work with you? And when they mentioned what they were going to pay him, my youth just humbly compose himself and accept the offer because he never give them nothing to put down right all right so he said he, he humbly accepted the offer because remember he was leaving the lawyer's office deflated because all the lawyer asked him how are you how is your wife you're eating well and then i got to tell him say if you still fail after this don't come back to my office right but he accepted the offer and the moment he did that God granted him grace, and he, in turn, called on some of his young lawyer partners, and they worked together, and within a year, they experienced exponential growth. So the young lawyer got a gift and went back to the senior lawyer's office and said to him, thank you for changing my life. <laughs> so the senior lawyer said to him, do you know what happened to you? Because you know those old senior people, they're very full of themselves, right? So he said, do you know what happened to you? 
That's what I'm interested in. You can keep your gift, right? Yeah, man. He said, you can keep your gift. But he said to the young lawyer, you have to study and know what happened to you so you can use it on others too. So, ladies and gentlemen, the point of this little story is you transform when an individual invests their credibility in you. Others transform when you invest your credibility in them. And that is what you're experiencing at Bethlehem. Your lecturers, the faculty, admin, everybody that is a part of this institution, they are investing their credibility in you. They could be otherwise minded, but they are investing in you so that you can in turn invest in others. Are we together? So awardees, lecturers, administrators, students, well-wishers, everyone under the sound of my voice, I charge you to build your legacy on the foundations laid today. I charge you to give your best always. Believe me when I tell you, what you have now is only a dream for somebody else. Whether you're a student, whether you are a lecturer, whatever your role is at this institution, some people can only dream about what you have. So I implore you to give your best always. Seek opportunities to grow. And as you grow, you evolve. And as you evolve, you transform lives. Not just your own, but everyone you encounter on your journey as you make a bid to leave a potent legacy. So I want you to say them after me again. The first one, I am building my legacy. I am building my legacy. The second one, to build my legacy, I must grow. To build my legacy, I must evolve. And to build my legacy, I must transform. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having this conversation with me today. I appreciate your attentiveness and I do hope that the words didn't just fly over your head your heads but it lodged somewhere and what we spoke about today has had some impact on you whether now or in the near future but my desire is that as you continue in this noble institution and when you move on from here because you're final year students as well true that you will leave a potent legacy at Bethlehem and wherever you go in life your legacy will speak for you Thank you very much. Gaitain, we would like to express sincere gratitude to you for such an inspiring message. Your message has encouraged us to continue to work assiduously. It has reignited the fire within us and has concretized the point that whatever we set our minds to, we can achieve it once we apply ourselves. Thank you for coming. Okay. 
all protocols observed. A very good morning, everyone. There is a past student in the audience, Dr. Ashman, and I'm just going to invite you to come up, please, and sit with us. She was a diploma student many years ago. She went away and she now has a PhD in education. Congratulations. <laughs> now, students, the award ceremony is a way of recognizing and celebrating our students' achievements who have attained excellence in academic and co-curricular activities for the academic year 2021-2022. As a multidisciplinary institution, Bethlehem Moravian College recognizes the Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Science and Associate of Science degree students for their outstanding academic performance. Congratulations. At today's awards ceremony, the focus will be on the present second, third, fourth year teacher education and year two Bachelor of Science student and associate degree students. The awards are given to students for academic excellence in 2021, as I've said before, and to those students who are involved in college related activities for last year, 2021, and also for this year, 22-23. In order to be eligible for the academic awards, a student must satisfy the requirements based on the grade point average. The grade point average is the average obtained by dividing the total grade points earned by the total quality hours, that is credits, for each course for which the student has registered for, excluding courses taken on a pass-fail basis, audited courses, preliminary courses not for credit. The grade point average for the academic year 2021-2021-2021-22 represents the student's academic standing for their courses and also the principal's honor roll and the honorary mention. Students who have received four A's and above in their courses last academic year, 2021-22, will receive a certificate of excellence. Awardees who are not on the principal's honor roll and the honorary mention, you can collect your certificates after the end of this function or tomorrow. The awards accordingly are, first one, principal honor roll, students whose grade point average is 3.6 and above. And we have 72 students for this award. Honorary mention, students whose grade point average is 3.0 to 3.59. There are 173 students for this award. We have 17 students who have been on the principal's honor roll for three consecutive years. And they're seated. We also have awards, the Dean's Award, the top student in the Faculty of Education, and so on, who has the 
highest GP. We also have some special awards, such as contribution to the music ministry, contribution to life on the halls of residence. We give these awards and trophies to build confidence, to build a positive learning environment, and to increase team and individual motivation. For those students who are not receiving an award today, persevere, have faith, pray, and you will be awarded next year. Finally, awardees, when you leave here today, celebrate your achievements and milestones. Colin Powell says, if you're going to achieve excellence in big things, you develop the habit in little matters. Excellence is not an exception. It is a prevailing attitude. Again, I applaud your achievements and wish you God's blessing. I now call on these persons to present the awardees accordingly. And we will start with the largest amount, honorary, commendation, honorary mention. And for primary education, I'm gonna call Mrs. Francine White McLean to call the names for the primary education students. And as we, sorry, as we prepare, I'm going to ask Dr. Gardner, I've asked her before, to present the replicas to the students. A pleasant morning, all. The following names are the students enrolled in the primary program who have successfully made it on the category of honorary mention. Shamoya Adams. <laughs> Donique Anderson. <laughs> Felicia Barnett. Yannick Black. Antonique Blackburn. Donamar Box. Ramon Burke. Shanique Burton. Denique Bogridge. Antoinette Brown. Ranique Brown. Shanice Brown. Shauna K. Brown. Leticia Burton. Casey Ann Burton Gale. Deanna Campbell. Kimberly Campbell. Carolee Campbell. Julia Campbell, Nikhail Crawford, Natasha Darian, Shanil Dennis, Tanisha Dennis, Whitney Ennis. Fiona Parkinson, 
Sharion Fair, Samantha Forrest, Brianne Francis, Shannon Gale, Nicolette Graham. Tessa Graham, Verona Gray, Cheyenne Gray, Diana K. Hall, Natalie Hamilton. Nika Hill, Jahimi Hendricks, Brittany Heron, Cherie Hewitt. Shanique Jackson, <laughs> Mrs. Bailey Simmons will continue. Dr. Gardner will remain. Good morning, everyone. Continuing the names, we have Anisia Jade. Lydia Martin, Cherise McDonald, Tia Ennett McKinney, sorry, Raquel Muir, Aquila Mullins. Gawain Parchment. <laughs> Davion Palmer. Audrian Pierce. <laughs> Sandrina Pierce. Misha Rodney. Stashana Russell. Lassandra Salmon. Sandra Samuel. Alexia Scott. Keone Senior. Chadrick Shaw. Nadia Simpson. Chelsea Simpson, Jolene Smith, Melissa Smith, Chevanese Smith, Chantel Stewart. Brittany Spence. Yeah. 
<laughs> Synovia Thompson. <laughs> Nevia Turnell. Shani Webb. <laughs> Filona Whittle. <laughs> Jordia Wright. <laughs> Karian Wright. Kellyanne Wright. And finally, Monique Wright. Thank you very much. Let's give a big round of applause to all the primary awardees. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey Simmons. I now call on Mrs. Ashley, Walker Ashley, for the early childhood students. Good morning, everyone. Still on the category of honorary mention for the early childhood students. Sashin Allen. Krishanique Barrett. Sania Boyd. Trishana Brown. Trudian Bruce. Tashina Clark, <laughs> Sophia Findlay, <laughs> Jamie Lee Forbes, <laughs> Corona Harrison, Paula Ann Medley. Mishka Morgan. Dijona Montague. Nicole Robinson. Ravine Robinson. Celine Salmon. Shantoya Sher. Charmaine Spencer Reese. Sidonia Swaby. Brittany Simpson. Antoinette Smith. Brittine Ann Watson.
Let's give them a rousing round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Gardner. Thank you, Mrs. Ashley. I now call on Mr. McKenzie to read the names and Mr. Rodney to present the record. Good morning, everyone. The following persons are enrolled in our various secondary education programs and uh, we recognize them today in the category of honorary mention. For computer science, Bradley Black. <laughs> Damian Butler. <laughs> Janique Koch. Dean Michael Daly, Warren Dixon, Ebony Elliott, Al J. Hamilton, Jonathan McCoy. Geneve Madden, <laughs> Naika Misik, <laughs> Shaquille Morris, Antoine Samuels, Shanika Stevens, for mathematics major, Tamika Daly Davis. Shauna Dunkley, <laughs> Nadisha Faulkner, <laughs> Justin Johnson, <laughs> Alethea Powell. Kamika Thompson, <laughs> Rivaldo Waysom, <laughs> Avagay Williams, <laughs> Brianna Wright. For English and Literature, Vanessa Adams. Samoya Banton. Antonio Burke. Amoy Christie. Asande Drummond, Sashane Foster, Michaela McIntosh, Matthew Rankin, Shana K. Russell, Thank you. 
Odisea Sharp. Temuani Sitchin Sambo. For Spanish and English Aryan authors. For geography, Alia Brevit. Shanil Williams. For history and social studies, Jaden Allen. Romano Ibanks. Kadesha Jackson. Farah Parker. Elizabeth Rowe. Shanice Simpson, Janice Smith. For business studies, Rochelle Barnett, Roshina Braham. Debrina Hall, Tiona Lindsay, Janelle Linton, Trisha Lee Samuels, Anisha Smith, Shamona Williamson. For Business Studies and Office, Office Systems Administration, Akila Adams. <laughs> Aisha Palmer. <laughs> Troisia Patrick. <laughs> Paulina Tinson. For Mathematics and Science, Javon Anglin. <laughs> For English and Social Studies, Shanika Morris. <laughs> Daniel Myers. Mariah Watson. For Social Studies and English, Mikaya Barnes, Alicia Barrett, Shane Facey, Bianca Parchment, Nikisha Robinson, Christian Smalling, and finally, Timika Towson. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie.
thank you, Mr. Rodney. I now call on Mrs. Gillian and uh, our speaker. Good morning, everyone. I present to you the awardees for honorary mention in the following programs Associate Degree, Business Administration, Brittany Collins. Lorian Gray, <laughs> Safari Hamilton, <laughs> Bachelor of Science Business Administration, Jody Ann Morgan, Right. <laughs> Associate of Science degree, Hospitality Tourism Management, Amoy Gray. <laughs> Shania Yu. <laughs> Debian Rowe. Smalling and Frederica Wright Taylor. And the final category Associate Degree. Criminal Justice, Anneli Coley, and Sheena Wright. I'm sorry, I missed the category. Towards the management, Janae Daly. Let's give the awardees a final round of applause. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Steenan. Thank you, Ms. Mrs. Gillian. I need a drum roll for the awardees, for the principals on a roll. This is Ms. Cody. Two thousand and twenty one to two thousand and twenty two, and the following programs starting with primary education. <laughs> Daria Algonon. <laughs> Denique Black. Anika Blackwood. <laughs> Nicoly Banton. <laughs> Latina Bromfield Robinson. <laughs> Dacia Buddle.
Monique Clark. Dadrian Hoy Watson. Aldreen Dixon. Selena Ebanks. Theodosia Finley Bennett. Isabella Gale. Kareen Honeygun Griffiths. Sashona Heath. <laughs> Wendy Ann Josephs. <laughs> Nikisha Mattis Bows. Jody Newell, <laughs> Stephanie Powell, <laughs> Ashia Plummer, Ashna K. Miller Stevens, <laughs> Rihanna Reed, <laughs> Valencia. Samuels Mowat, Den Denicia Sherman, Chelsea Smith. Vernon, Lejavia Waldron, <laughs> Olivia Watson, <laughs> Tiwana Mill, Tiwana Walker. Travis Walters, <laughs> Samantha Wilmot, <laughs> and finally in this category, I'm sorry, in this program of study, Alison Hart Williams. <laughs> Early Childhood, Ruth Ann Graham. 
Sanika Montague. Amanda Williamson. Business Studies, Andrea Darion. Tashania Francis. Chantel McCurdy. Nicola Wallace. History and Social Studies, Javane Wallace. English and Literature, Prashani Price. Tafari Sewell. Trishon Williams. English and Social Studies, Deandra Caradiz. Computer Science, Dana Lee Young. Bobby Gay Hutton. Geography, Brian Campbell. Anastasia Morris. Giovanni Saunders. Sashay Robinson. Shavane Smith. Mathematics and Science. Brittany Pinto. Brittany Simpson. Keshev Winter. Double Mathematics, Rion Hensley. Glacier Hibbert. Carrie Ann McKenzie.
Mikaya Wilson. Spanish major and English minor, Junice Dusai. Um, thank you. We just want to acknowledge again the 17 students and we want them to stand, the 17 students on the principal honor roll for three consecutive years. And I'm going to call on Madam Principal again. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, these students have been on the principals on a roll for the past three consecutive years 2019, 2020. 2020 to 2021, 2021, 2022. And that is noteworthy. We will begin by calling the name Shana K. Blackwood. Nikisha Mattis Bowes. <laughs> Olivia Carby, where are you? Janice Desai. Shakira Gale. Tamara Lewis. Juanidia James. Britannia McCollum. Abigail Williams. Natalia Williams. Plummer. Rihanna Reed. <laughs> Shakira Reed. Chavane Smith. <laughs> Kaveen Swaby. <laughs> Ashley Wright.
And finally, but not the least, Alicia Whiteley. Thank you. There is an item coming up now before we do our final segment, special awards.
final segment, special awards. But we want to continue for a moment for outstanding academic achievement in year one, 2021-2022. I'm gonna ask our chairman to come and present to our awardees. The first student in this category is from Early Childhood Education, Amanda Williamson. With a grade point average of 3.91. 16 courses, 15 A's. Followed by primary education, Anika Blackwood. Great point average of 4.2. That's the highest. It tops everybody. Fourteen courses, 14 A's. Secondary education, Makaya Wilson, 3.99. Associate degree, Janae Daly, 3.38. And the WB Trophy Award for Academic Excellence in year one. The awardee is Anika Black, 14 courses, 14 days. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have three Dean's Awards for outstanding academic achievement in the Faculty of Humanities. Present is Dr. Bailey, if she's here, please come. The awardee goes to, the award goes to Britannia McCallum. <laughs> With a great point. Grade point average of 4.07. For outstanding academic achievement in the Faculty of Social Sciences, Mr. Unaware, the awardee is Shakira Reed, 3.85. Outstanding Academic Achievement in the Faculty of Natural Sciences. Mr. Malcolm, please come. The award goes to Ashley Wright, 3.77. Our final academic award, the Business Department Entrepreneurship Award. 
And I'm going to ask Mr. Rodney or Mrs. Salmon HOD for business. She's not here. Miss Black want to present this award. This is a new award. And the, the awardee is Samantha Sams. <laughs> not here? Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Now, some college related activities, and we do recognize them and recognize our students for dedication to spiritual wellness on campus. We have two awardees, and I'm going to ask Reverend Seymour to present the awards Kashev Winter and Shevani Smith. For outstanding contribution to the music ministry on campus, we have uh, four awardees: Glacia Hibbert, <laughs> Natalie, Natalia Williams, Britannia McCallum, and Raina Reed. And I'm going to ask Mr. Bulgin to present. Let me repeat again, Glacia Hibbert, Natalia Williams, Britannia McCollum, Raina Reed. I'm going to ask Reverend Seymour to present this award for being an outstanding, willing student who worked beyond the call of duty. And the award goes to Justin Johnson. <laughs> Thank you for outstanding contribution to the life on the halls of residence. First hall, Hastings, Tamika Daly Davis, Edrika Jarrett, Kashev Winter, Brittany Simpson, Rihanna Reed. Four awardees. Tamika Daly Davis, <laughs> Edrika Jarrett, Kashev Winter, Kashev, Brittany Simpson, and Rihanna Reed. And the presenter is Miss Mullins.
Thank you. Mrs. Gillen Ashton, and the awardees are Dijona Montague, Glacia Hibbert, Ashley Witter, Renisha Dingham, Zardia Heim. Yes, those are the four. Thank you. Dr. Potiner, Fleming, Warren Dixon, Bradley Black, and Stephen Cooper. These are the awardees. Warren Dixon, Bradley Black, and Stephen Cooper. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Certificate of Excellence in Research. I'm gonna ask Ms. Gravitz to come. There are, we have two names. I think these students presented at the conference, so we want to award them accordingly. At our recent Teachers Colleges of Jamaica Research Conference. We have representing Bethlehem Moravian College, three oral presentation and seven poster presentations. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge Brittany Simpson and Kishev Winter for their part. So first, to Brittany Simpson. And next, Kishev Winter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Finally, finally, the most outstanding male and female athletes of our recent sports day. For the male, the awards go to Delano Harriet, Washington House. And for the female, the award goes to Rochelle Fenton. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Blessings. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns problems into gifts, 
failures into success, the unexpected into perfect timing, and mistakes into important events. Gratitude makes sense of the past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Melody Beetle. Mr. Lowell Morgan, Chairman, Board of Management, Acting Principal, Mrs. Claudine Blythe-Miles, VP of Academic Affairs, Dr. Sharon Gardner, Acting VP of Administrative Affairs, Mr. Hervin Rodney, Registrar, Mrs. Janaiti White Grunston, Chaplain, Reverend Seymour, our guest speaker, Mrs. Peter Gaitain, Dean, Dr. Dr. Bailey, Mr. Malcolm, Mr. Unaware, lecturers, members of the administrative and ancillary staffs, students, and other specially invited guests, good afternoon. I consider it a great privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this auspicious occasion. Let me first start by giving praise to the Almighty God for making today's occasion a resounding success. Mrs. Peter Gaitain, our special guest speaker, is a past student of Bethlehem Moravian College and a training manager in the hospitality industry. And this is testament that Bethlehem produces outstanding students. Mrs. Stain, you have motivated us to continue to strive for excellence. In addition, you gave us three ingredients in becoming a... So you all forgot. In becoming a... I'm not... So you're building a... And what were the ingredients? Is? Very good. That will stay with us, me. So we will continue to grow, evolve, and very good. Thank you for energizing and inspiring us. You added value to this award ceremony by sharing knowledge and new perspectives. Chairman, Mr. Lowell Morgan, thank you for chairing this event in a most efficient manner. To Reverend Seymour, without the presence of God in our midst, this event would not have been so enriching. Thank you for invoking the Lord's presence. Dr. Gardner, Madam, you did an excellent job in welcoming everyone to this award ceremony. We felt welcomed and appreciated. To our acting principal, Mrs. Claudine Blythe Miles, Mrs. Miles, thank you for your statement. You have impl implemented several strategies and have always motivated us to do our best. Thank you for always encouraging, molding, and motivating us. To the Bethlehem Choir and Mr. Darvin Ricketts, I thank you for your melodious rendition. Thank you, Ms. Dana Lee Young, for so eloquently introducing our guest speaker. Mrs. Grunston, we want to extend gratitude to you and your team for your hard work and commitment in calculating the GPAs, your overview broad transparency to the selection process. We are grateful to you. We are grateful that you, you've given of your time and your talents to ensure that we are celebrated for our achievements. Thank you. To you, the awardees, Without you, today would not have been possible. You have been rewarded for your excellence. Thank you for believing in yourselves. Continue to inspire and motivate others. Let me also express my deep gratitude to the lecturers who continue to mold, support, mentor, and motivate us. Thank you for ser serving so selflessly. Ladies and gentlemen, an event of this magnitude cannot happen overnight. It requires diligent planning and attention to detail. Therefore, let me extend gratitude to the events committee for planning and executing this event. Your efforts are noteworthy. 
To all other persons who shared in this award ceremony, I extend a heartfelt thank you. You have impacted Bethlehem Moravian College in a positive way. Thank you. Just before um, Bishop Anglin pronounced the benediction and with the college song, I firstly, where's Darvion Ricketts? Where's Mr. Ricketts? He's gone? Ask him to come a minute. But secondly, I am, well, I've been to a number of our awards functions. I believe that this is the first time I've seen so many awardees but I'm asking the registry to ensure that we track the students just to see the performance when they exit Bethlehem. You understand what I'm saying? Performance, awardees, year one, year two, year three. We track the students, Mrs. Regis, and tell us how they do at the end of year four. Um, Dr. Tomlinson, where is she? Uh, hiding in the corner. Thank you very much for chairing the functions committee and putting on an excellent function. Thank you. <laughs> After he sang, I was sent a note to say that the item he rendered was original. He wrote it. And he sang. Let me take a minute to congratulate all the awardees. Um, I, I have just one little disappointment that I didn't see a male in the principal's honor roll for the three consecutive years. For the three consecutive years. And um, I must say that the, the females continued to dominate. The Bethlehem was a female college initially, and the male came on board just about in the 1970s, late 70s, 1980s. I must, I must declare that I was one of those males in the 1980s. And I um, want to just encourage the males who are here, not to be outshined, but to step up. And so I, I leave you with a few thoughts. Identify who you are, know who you are, and don't be afraid to develop your potential. Stand firm in the face of the challenges you face and rejoice regardless of the circumstances you are in. Be humble. Grow as our speaker charged you. Evolve, transform. And finally, put God at the center of your life and let him guide you. Please stand with me. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for today's activity, for all those who work hard in the planning, for those who work hard and excel in their academic performances, for those, Lord Jesus, who contribute to the life on campus by their contribution to the various areas of campus college life. We lift up before you, Lord, this institution as we charge forward for the changing, the transformation of the college. We pray that your divine presence and guidance will lead us through. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and always. Amen.
we join in the calling song, the dream of the future. Thank you. 